Hello everybody, welcome to the first uh, class uh, in the foundation series of physics. Uh, my name is Dr. Naveen Rawat. I am an associate professor of physics uh, in the department of science at Quantum University. And uh, today's lecture will be just a brief overview of uh, physics in general and uh, some of these uh, ideas you might be exposed to during your uh, high school and some of the concepts that I might be discussing today is, uh, uh, is entirely new for you maybe. Uh, but uh, the idea here is to give you uh, an exposure as to what is going on in, uh, in a limited sense uh, people are working on in, in physics. Okay? We are trying to uh, you know, predict what is going to happen in the future okay? in a sense. And overall picture we are all running after uh, something and that is the search for uh, fundamental and universal principles that govern causes and effects in the universe okay so we want to understand how the, each and everything in the universe works whether you are going down to a subatomic level and we are talking about an electron or an atom or you are looking at uh, these large galaxies and we are trying to uh, develop theories and equations that can describe the behavior of these uh, these constituents uh, in nature okay and the uh, agreed upon methodology now is that uh, you know we have to come up with some hypothesis and uh, we have to test that by doing some experiments okay and uh, once you do the experiments you have to record your observations have enough uh, data collected and uh, you have drawn enough conclusion and then you might have to revise your hypothesis and come up with something new and this is our modern scientific methodology that we we follow okay so uh, back in the day uh, we were living in the aristotle world okay and this uh, pre uh, modern scientific era had this uh, belief that uh, you know everything in the in the universe has a natural place in it okay so it is quite interesting to think about you know Imagine that there are two, two uh, uh, friends uh, on, on top of a mountain and one of them uh, sees uh, a shooting star go by and he says to his friend, you know, uh, dude, where is this shooting star going? And obviously the second friend would reply that, you know, uh, he, it's going where it is supposed to go because uh, it has some natural place in the universe where uh, it is meant to uh, go. And that's what is governing the motion of this object in the sky. It was not until uh, late 1500s that uh, the modern physics was born. Okay, and uh, before this physics, you know, we were living in a geocentric universe that uh, we believe that Earth is the is the center of the universe and all the things uh, are revolving around us. And uh, lately, uh, you know, this model was uh, overthrown by uh, Copernicus, and uh, he presented the heliocentric model in which. Uh, you know, we believe that the sun is the center and all the all the planets uh, revolve around the sun okay uh, and it turns out actually uh, you know even the sun uh, is not the center but there is a very center which is uh, located uh, somewhere away from the the center of the sun and actually uh, there is the wobble of the planet that actually happens uh, and uh, you know this is one of the phenomena that is used to actually figure out whether there are planets revolving around uh, a star and uh, astronomers they use this uh, information to to figure out where there are planets are located and uh, you know we might find uh, new forms of life uh, essentially the ideology that stood was that laws of nature are mathematical okay and uh, that is what we truly believe in now okay and uh, the solid foundation uh, on which the modern physics is, is based on is that uh, you know quantitative experiments need to be done uh, in order to establish uh, and confirm uh, these laws in nature okay and uh, some of the proponents of these uh, this modern ideology were uh, your um, uh, Johannes Kepler and uh, Galileo who is considered as the father of modern physics and uh, you know they came up with these mathematical laws describing how uh, planets uh, and celestial objects are moving and then uh, the Newtonian physics uh, came in around the early 1700s. We have our three famous laws of, uh, of Newton, a body at rest, 
uh, remains at rest and a body in motion continues to move at a constant velocity along a straight line unless acted upon by an external force okay so uh, this law itself is quite revolutionary right because it is completely against our common uh, experience in life that you know uh, objects they actually do not stay at rest right so if you see um, uh, in observation you will see that you know celestial objects and all are constantly moving and um, you know you will always see that you know something that is moving doesn't necessarily keep on moving but it actually stops because there is friction and other effects so uh, to come up with such a revolutionary statement was uh, was uh, quite insightful in in newton's part right and uh, then we have the second law of newton which says that uh, the force acting on a body gives an acceleration in the direction of the force okay and has a magnitude uh, given by the equation f is equal to ma right and essentially what we are saying here is that you know if you have an object of mass m and there might be many forces acting on it but if the net force is in some particular direction then this uh, object of mass m will be accelerating in that particular direction okay so you, you have to remember that the net force is uh, actually uh, proportional uh, to mass m's acceleration and today a lot of uh, problems in physics are solved using uh, using the newton's laws the beginning of the 20th century has brought us uh, a lot of new development in physics starting from the incorporation of uh, statistical mechanics uh, and uh, development of uh, thermodynamics uh, along with the classical physics that has helped us describe uh, most of the macroscopic world and um, einstein in 1905 came up with his special theory of relativity where he realized that uh, if you are looking at objects that are moving at very very high speed comparable to the speed of light you need a completely new set of uh, physics and uh, theory to describe uh, this kind of motion and the energies of this particle i'm sure e equal to mc square everybody is aware of the equation and um, what einstein said was that uh, it is not time that is uh, constant for everybody in fact uh, time can be different for everybody what is the constant thing that everybody can rely upon is the speed of light and that is a universal constant and um, from there his uh, and using this postulate he came up with uh, a new set of equations to describe uh, motion of uh, objects that are traveling at very very high speeds okay and uh, a little bit later around 1930s we have uh, these brilliant minds coming together you have your schrodinger and your uh, heisenberg and bohr and they all uh, collaborated and came up with the theory of quantum mechanics and uh, basically uh, it was very early on that uh, the scientists had realized that uh, as soon as uh, the electrons and uh, this subatomic particles were discovered that uh, to describe uh, these atoms and electrons of smaller sizes a new theory is required because classical mechanics was not giving you the right uh, prediction of their behavior and the energy levels and um, uh, it was uh, through quantum mechanics that we could uh, correctly describe these systems okay once you talk about uh, physics uh, especially mechanics what we are interested in is how the objects are actually moving right because uh, at a fundamental level we want to understand uh, basically uh, the position of an object and uh, the momentum right and the motion of the object is uh, described by uh, basically its uh, velocity right so uh, to understand how the objects move we should have a basic understanding of the forces that are at play uh, that define this motion so so in in physics your uh, fundamental forces in nature are usually divided into four categories uh, so you have the strong nuclear force and uh, this is the force that is uh, responsible in binding the nuclei together so holding neutrons and protons together and a lot of things are still being researched in this uh, in this field 
uh, and uh, the next force uh, which is of a uh, little bit st stronger uh, uh, decreasing strength actually then the the nuclear force is your electromagnetic force and where you have uh, uh, your day-to-day uh, -day electromagnetic phenomena and uh, describing how charges are moving how magnetic field is affecting charges and uh, mostly this is the most common force that we all encounter uh, on earth today and uh, a lot of people uh, made a significant uh, advancement in electromagnetism uh, most famously Maxwell, uh, Coulomb, uh, Ampere and Faraday uh, and I am uh, confident that you have experienced a, a little bit of electromagnetic forces uh, and what they are in, in your high school. The next force uh, that is common to to uh, to all of the uh, fundamental nature is your weak nuclear force and this force is used to describe some of the nuclear decay that is uh, happening in, in 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 materials okay so and finally we have the gravitational force and uh, so I, I i think you, uh, you are more familiar with the electromagnetic and the gravitational force right uh, where gravitational force is uh, always attractive right and um, of course, it was Newton and Einstein who uh, who used the gravitational force uh, in his theory and uh, developed uh, later uh, the general theory of uh, relativity, right? So, so uh, the way these four uh, forces actually work is uh, by uh, some uh, fundamental particles that mediate the interaction. Okay, and essentially the strong nuclear forces. The, the particles that mediate the interaction are known as gluons okay and um, uh, the particles that uh, uh, come into play in electromagnetic forces are the photons okay so I'm, I'm, hopefully we have uh, some experience with uh, with the creation and, uh, and uh, emission of photons and uh, with the weak nuclear force the, the the particles that are responsible for for mediating this uh, force is are known as the gauge bosons so we have these three types uh, w uh, plus and minus and this uh, z0 and this plus and minus this refers to the charge and uh, then you have the gravitational force and uh, the particle that we we believe is responsible for the for the gravity gravity to work is, is graviton and we are still looking for it okay so so uh, these are the fundamental forces and the the particles that are responsible for the for the interaction okay so um, now uh, actually the uh, four fundamental forces are uh, in effect reduced to three uh, back in uh, 1960s when uh, the electromagnetic force and the weak force was actually unified uh, into uh, the same theory and so now we have this electroweak um, uh, theory which was uh, developed by uh, Glashow, Weinberg and Salam and they, they got the Nobel Prize in 1979 for it. And uh, essentially, it says that you know this electromagnetism and weak force they were all uh, uh, originating from the one place before the Big Bang. And once the Big Bang happened, these forces got separated. And uh, you know, it's a quite interesting theory how uh, you know particles then interacted with these uh, fields and uh, developed to mass and everything. So we have a standard model of particle physics, and according to this model, uh, your protons and neutrons are not uh, essentially your uh, fundamental particles. In fact, the protons and neutrons are made up of uh, particles which are known as quarks. Okay, So each of the protons and neutrons are made up of three quarks. Okay, And so the current model uh, of the atom looks something like this, where you have these electrons which are fundamental particles that are going around the nucleus. And the nucleus is uh, made up of these neutrons and protons, and even the neutrons are made up of quarks. And uh, essentially, a neutron is made up of uh, one up quark and two down quarks. And uh, your proton, for example, is made of two up quarks and one down quark. Okay. And uh, essentially, uh, these uh, up quarks and down quarks they have charges. And they add up to uh, you know one in case of your proton, and they uh, add up to uh, zero in terms of uh, of a neutron. Okay, 
and there are other quirks that are also present to you have strangeness and charm and bottomness and topness and so so these are uh, different types of uh, quirks as well okay so strange charm bottom and top and up and down so so uh, uh, we have learned a lot of uh, things about uh, these uh, particles uh, as the field of uh, uh, nuclear uh, physics has advanced over time and um, uh, currently uh, the fundamental particles as uh, we see today are essentially these uh, gauge bosons okay which are these w and z0 uh, boson and uh, you have uh, basically gluons uh, that are responsible for the strong force and uh, you have the photons which are responsible for the electromagnetic force and along with these you have uh, these quarks that uh, add up to form uh, your uh, protons and neutrons and you have the leptons essentially these are uh, electron type uh, particles you have the electrons and muons and and so on okay so uh, uh, when we talk about uh, these different types of particles they are essentially uh, divided into fermions and boson and uh, essentially what the difference between these two is that uh, in case of fermions each uh, particle uh, can be represented uh, by some uh, for example some quantum numbers n l m l and m of s uh, and these uh, basically four quantum numbers for example in the case of uh, electrons uh, you can uh, basically uh, label each electron and uh, you can uh, categorize each electron as being different from the other okay so depending on what values of uh, n l and uh, this m of l and m of s value of an electron uh, it will have some corresponding energy okay and um, uh, so uh, apart from this uh, fermions if we have particles uh, that uh, are not distinguishable from each other uh, and uh, essentially they can all uh, occupy the same energy level then uh, you can categorize them as uh, bosons okay so so you have these uh, fermions for example these leptons which are which are part of this electron family so all of them have spin half and uh, you know uh, the bosons uh, for example these photons and these gauge bosons they all have a spin of 1 so my hope was to expose you to uh, these different areas of physics uh, we talked a little bit about classical mechanics uh, quantum mechanics particle physics uh, and uh, there are many other areas of physics uh, like you can see from this uh, structure of physics uh, that is created here and uh, i hope uh, this inspires you to uh, look at physics with a with a much broader perspective uh, as you start your program okay thank you very much